Welcome to AEW Unrestricted, the official podcast of All Elite Wrestling. I am Aubrey Edwards here with my guest co-host, Alex Abrahentes. How are you, buddy? I'm doing fantastic. How are you today? I'm doing good. I'm on my third cup of coffee. It's snowing outside. Say, it's, it's snowing outside. That's insane. Yeah, I mean, so I like know... Washington's weird. It doesn't snow here. So like this is basically the apocalypse. Like I might oh not make gosh. it to work next week. I, it's going to be bad. Uh, yeah, I hope I see you Wednesday. <laughs> I don't know. I, I might be dead. I might be snowed in with the whole one, half inch of snow we're going to get. Anyway, let's not talk about me and our apocalypse that we're having here. Let's talk about our guest today. He is the technical beast. He is uh, uh, an amazing, amazing individual and a super, super nice guy. I don't know. I'm totally breaking cave tape here. Uh, Josh Woods, how you doing, buddy? Hey, I'm doing great. First of all, if it's snowing, I'm not even leaving my house. Like I, I do cold weather. Well, you're you. in Florida, so like 70 is cold for you. Well, I, you know what? No, 70 is not. 66 <laughs> is cold for me, okay? Like, that's mm, why yeah, That's right. Ooh, that's fair. They're on in my car. Yeah, I don't like that. Man. I uh, I definitely love, like, when we travel to the cold places in the uh, in the winter, and all of the people that live in Florida are bringing, like, their massive parkas. They're like, oh, my God, it's freezing, and I've just got, like, a hoodie. I'm like, whatever. This is, like, 50. It's fine. I'm Whatever. still wearing my daddy shorts, so I mean, like, I just deal with it. That's you, right. We, yeah. Oh my god, we you left. You do do that. Where, where were we this week? I don't even remember. Um, uh, uh, Indiana. 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 Yeah, we left Indiana. This motherfucker gets on the bus <laughs> in shorts. I know. <laughs> How do you do it? Uh, I think I just deal, dude. It's just a small little walk from the A to B, so it's not like I'm like running a marathon outside. Oh my but god! But it's still cold inside. Yeah, but I mean, if I wear like long sleeves or a hoodie, it's okay. It bounces out, I think. And I got big legs, so it's like a lot of insulation. He, he just had to have two of the <laughs> four insulation. limbs covered, and he's fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just I need at least fifty percent, and I'm good. <laughs> that's 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 uh, the know. secret. That's the, the things secret. we're learning already. This is fantastic. Yeah. Now everybody is... knows the secret to staying warm: fifty percent. Fifty percent. That must be <laughs> Vance's secret too, because he definitely uh, is one of those wearing shorts around guys. All right. <laughs> Who's that? Vance. Oh, yeah. No, yeah. Oh, well, all the time. Oh, he's from Michigan. That's not fair. That's true. That's true. Yeah. Anyway, let's let's actually talk about like wrestling shit. <laughs> I don't oh. know how it's been like five minutes and we haven't even talked about wrestling. So uh, <laughs> December. <laughs> I know, right? December 2021 debuted uh, at AEW, lost to Sean Spears on Dark. How did you how did your AEW journey start? It's not living the past year, okay? <laughs> uh, yeah. that's, how did it start? Uh, I think like the transition from like being in Ring of Honor to AEW is pretty, pretty self-explanatory. I think uh, I met like everyone is pretty much in office or who is uh, at AEW that is like in charge of talent stuff. Like, can I say stuff like that? Yeah. I don't know. I don't. Know. Okay. Yeah, but like, yeah. So I had a pretty good relationship with everybody in Ring of Honor. Uh, some people. Uh, as nice of people as I am, but I think it just pays to be a good person. And uh, I think that kind of helped me get in contact with the right people and, and get the opportunity that I had. And kind of from there was just staying on top of everything and uh, just continuing to, to wrestle as much as I can. And then, you know, the rest is history because here I am. God, I'm such a dork. Jesus Christ. <laughs> <laughs> it's quite all right. It's quite all right. We, uh, we appreciate that about you. So you had that match at dark and then you went into an angle with Keith Lee where, you know, you put a submission on him. How did this all come to be? Was it, did you know going in after you did this match with Sean Spears that, okay, there's an opportunity here. I'm going to be called back. Or was that kind of a, well, we'll see what happens situation. And then all of a sudden you get moved into this kind of program with Keith Lee. Uh, I think, I think I did like quite a few darks before that happened. Um, I think I just stayed. Yeah, stay consistent. And, you know, once like the, what pay-per-view is that with Ring of Honor? Uh, where I was still the pure Death champion. Death Before Dishonor? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Uh, was that was that it? Was that the, man, I don't even know. It was so long ago. When yeah, you wrestled Duda? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, that was it. Before. Yeah, we'll get to that. Feels so long ago. Uh, Dude, we don't even remember where we were last week. <laughs> <laughs> this is so true. <laughs> Dude, like, it just all blends together. It's like, oh, I'm in another airport again. I run, I won stuff in real life. Like I don't I don't care. So I yeah. mean, like just it, it costs nothing to to be a good person and do good business. And and I think like just you know humbling. I, I guess it is humbling, maybe. Uh, but 
yes, after that. And then just, you know, wrestling with Utah and then just kind of staying on top of it and just trying to get opportunity. And that led to Nice and I getting together after doing some, I guess I did pretty good on dark a couple times and Tony Khan liked it. And it's like, Hey, let's put these guys in. And here we are. Boop. He has a, he has a way of pairing people oh. into tag teams and it just yep. ends up working. Like we've seen that time and time again, like current tag champs acclaimed. It was just TK like, Hey, you, you two guys seem like you're good together. And Hey, you know, it turns out that worked. Um, so I want to talk a little bit more about your, your teaming with Nice and pairing with Sterling. Talk about the moment when you knew that that was going to be a tag team and sort of like how you guys clicked. Uh, so, so this is, I think we had done a dark and I had just done something solo. I think Nice had done something and then we're just kind of sitting there and he's like, Hey, Tony Mitchell, we might be together. It was like, well, I mean, uh-huh. okay. And then we all were, we were already like just kind of goofing around anyway. It was like, all right. Well, I mean, you're pretty athletic and, and, and like, I'm kind of dorky in the, in the back. Like, I just, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. Like I look like super tough and like, yeah, can I hurt anybody for real? But like, I, I like to play around and I like laugh a lot and just make jokes. And I was like, well, Mark, I mean, I guess I'll, we can be together, but Tony might get jealous of us. So we have to hide it. He's like, what's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I just, I just, I don't know, I'm just silly. And I think stuff like that is just, I don't know, being lighthearted is fun. Some people take this way too serious. I'm like, man, we play fight with our friends, like on TV and spandex. Like, what's, what's so serious about <laughs> You know, no, and, uh, did- I was going to ask, but, did you uh, did you know Tony going into this beforehand? I did not. I had I had you know a pretty pretty uh I guess like respectful is that the right word where you know you you try to introduce yourself to everybody and make sure you mm-hmm. know you're you're at least cordial right because like that's like a huge thing and some people are fist bump guys or some are, oh you have to shake my hand I'm like yo hey what's up dude uh, that's me uh, that's me. so. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, all right, don't touch me. I'm a bit gross. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm like a big germaphobe, but it's, yeah, it's really weird. It's kind of, yeah, especially for like wrestling in college. Yeah, uh, <laughs> yeah it's like I, I talked to everybody and, you know, so I, I had spoken with Tony a couple of times and as I've been there more consistently, we just kept talking more and more. And we got along pretty well prior to us even being uh, thought of as a team or that being suggested. So like once, like, we had been told that we had already had some rapport and it had just been like, Oh, well, we're together now, guys. <laughs> you know, it was, just, it was like that. It was fun. It was cool. I'm i uh, I'm curious. Do you guys like end up hitting the gym together? Cause obviously you're both like athlete mm-hmm. guys, gym guys, or is it just more of like a, you hit the gym separately and then talk about your routines afterwards? Uh, I, well, we don't, we don't even live in the same area. Like he lives in Orlando and I'm in Tampa. I mean, I could drive there, but I don't know. That's a little far to work out together. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. Maybe like a Tuesday or a Wednesday morning or something. I don't know. Like, wouldn't we all come together? Yeah. Uh, so, like, Tony, Tony's like, for me, every time I ask him, his schedule is like very, like, you know, like, I'm pretty consistent on the road. I like, sometimes still do cardio, and I'm like, well, I don't do cardio ever. Uh, I don't even run from my problems. So, like, there's zero chance. <laughs> Like, that's not happening. Uh, and, and plus, Tony looks really good. And and then I would just be embarrassed because I don't look as, as good as Tony. I'm like, oh, man. And, like, we'll do stuff. And I'll be like, all right, I'm not going to go shirt with my shirt. I'm like, can you not? Like, can you look, can you just keep <laughs> like, what's wrong with you? So I've had this, like, oh, no. Oh, no, what oh, no your camera. What happened? Someone, so it's Jay. Jay's calling me lethal. Like, we talk every day, like, legit. Like, we'll talk, like, forever. <laughs> And can someone text him like, hey, can you stop calling Josh Woods? <laughs> I'm going to text him right now. All right. I'm going to text him right now. Like, yeah, call him again. <laughs> Special guest, Jay Lethal, calling and fucking up our shit. <laughs> All <laughs> right, I'll text him. What am I doing with this? This is hard. Turn your phone. Yeah, there you go. There you go. I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> Regarding people that you know, we talked about Tony Nese. What about Mark Sterling? Did you know him going in? What's your relationship <laughs> with him? He's a bit of a prankster too, though, right? Uh, yeah, Mark's a funny dude. Like we, we have a very similar uh, style of humor, and like I don't know how to describe like how Tony's humor is different than ours, but he's he's definitely like the big brother for sure. He's a little more serious than us. And I'm like I do a lot of like silly things or say stupid things, but that's okay because I don't care. Uh, but I didn't I didn't really know Mark before getting to AEW, uh, so. I mean, we, we all clicked like pretty instantly. I think just being lighthearted is fun and like not taking everything serious. 
like I joke around a lot about, like, well, yeah, like I wrestle in college, I could just beat up both of you. And so they just give me a hard time. <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they give me a hard time about it, but like I say it in jest, but I think like my delivery is pretty good. And, like I say it like very like for cereal. So uh, they're like, okay, we get it, dude. You can beat us up. Like, I, like I was kidding when I said that. <laughs> like, let it go. I let it go, guys. Yeah, uh, so. I love it, especially because you're like, just totally breaking kayfabe here, but you're like one of the nicest guys backstage. And it's always mm-hmm. funny that like the scariest looking dudes are always like the nicest guys. It's, it's like, oh man, that guy looks terrifying. And then you're like, hey, you doing okay? Can I go get you a water? Like, how's everybody doing today? I'm like, man, <laughs> this guy's great. Yeah. What well, good energy. I love it. That's why Jay Lethal keeps calling you during this podcast because he's just like, yeah, this is my buddy. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, man. I think like... I don't know. I'll be tough when I have to be. You guys didn't piss me off. I don't got to hurt you. So, you know, just <laughs> I like that. That's good, to know. good to know we're on your good side. Yeah, yeah. we'll stay that way. <laughs> I don't walk around angry. I got, is that for real? Do a lot of people do that? I don't know. Some people do. Ooh. They're like, I'm like, mm-hmm. I don't know if I want to talk to you, but I'll be like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like well, that. let's get back into talking about uh, Ring of Honor, because obviously you were the pure champion for a while. And then you had this match with Wheeler, Utah at uh, mm-hmm. Death Before Dishonor, right? Or no, I'm sorry. It wasn't Death Before Dishonor. Super it was Card Super of Card of Honor. Honor. Yeah, 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 see? Yeah, yeah. There yeah, there's a lot of honor in Ring of Honor. <laughs> so much. So much honor everywhere. So much. So much. Oh, so yeah. what was that like? When did you find out that you were wrestling Wheeler? And have you had an opportunity to wrestle him before? So when when we brought the Pure Tournament back in uh, 2019, 2020, question mark? I don't remember. Uh, yeah, it must have been 19. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of... Oof, that's probably not going to be good to say. Okay, so I won't say it. Uh, <laughs> like, I don't really follow a lot of, of wrestling. Like, I'll just be honest. Like, I don't, like, watch a lot of indie matches and stuff. So I don't really know who, like, everybody is. Like, that's just... I just yeah, have other things that I do in my life. Uh, so I didn't really know who everyone was. But, like, once, you know, people got announced for this tournament, you know, and we were there. So, like, I watched everything. And like I just watched people in the watch matches from people who weren't going to be in it and stuff. And like I saw like when Yuta wrestled Gresh, uh, that an awesome match. I was like, oh man, Yuta's really good. Like that was cool. So once you know, fast forward when it was announced, like man, I was really looking forward to that because like I love technical wrestling, and I know like a lot of people think it's kind of boring. And and that, hey, man, there's like a niche for everybody, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't flip, so people are like, oh, Josh, what is boring? I was like, well, I'm too like forty. I don't want to flip. <laughs> just because i can doesn't mean i should you know like it just like <laughs> yeah you know there's so that's why like our that's why our company is so great because there's a little bit of everything for everyone and um so when i saw you to wrestle and then i was like man like this he's really good like, i really love to wrestle him so i'm glad we got to do that uh, a couple times so that in each match which is better and better so i'm sure if we wrestle it again it would be even better than the last one so uh, i think you is great he's great uh, yeah, he sure is all right, Death Before Dishonor, you were a surprise judge in Wheeler Yuta versus Daniel Garcia. How how did that happen? How do, how do the judges get determined? <laughs> Just, hey, what are you doing? I think like, if you understand, like, obviously you should understand the rules and, and uh, have some experience in that division. So I definitely think that helps. Uh, I think it's just a matter of who knows what or who understands and is is there i just know what i understand I know. yeah there you go because yeah, obviously there's a lot of rules when it comes to the pure title and it's got to be explained and then of course you as a judge need to know those rules in order to be able to deduct points accordingly right well yeah not only like technical points but you gotta you gotta factor in a lot of things when you're judging a pure rules match like style points because that mm-hmm. for me style cool uh like aggression is good like you can still be technical and be aggressive i, <laughs> I wish i still had the sheet because i had like a long list of things i was writing like whose gear was cooler who had like the better. <laughs> oh and, yeah like, who, like it. Were, were <laughs> who, who got reversed more like I, I don't know i try to have fun when i do almost anything so i was like oh this would be really fun if it goes down to a decision so i was Ooh. i take i take it serious but i have fun at the same time just a little uh, inside baseball. Uh, we always have Mike Posey do the pure wrestling uh, matches because I can never remember the rules. So we've just sort of made him like the pure wrestling expert. So it's like, oh, pure title. Posey's doing that one. <laughs> we're just he's like, the yeah, pure we're ref. Not. He's I the pure ref. Love, 
you love technical wrestling. I'm surprised I you love technical wrestling, but like there's a difference between technical wrestling and pure wrestling. And it's just mm. like, there's, there's just a lot of little nuances and I don't know. Yeah. I haven't, I'll do it eventually. It's on my bucket list, but I'm like, eh, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll go do this match yeah. instead <laughs> one day. It's definitely like a very niche thing. And, and, um, I, I love it. I thrive in it. It allows your brain to think differently and, mm. and it brings kind of more of a, a classic feel to wrestling back like where rules really do mean something and and you can kind of bend them or use them to your advantage so i, th- I think it makes i think everyone should try at least once just just to let your brain think differently and and uh allow yourself to be more creative so yeah i, I love it i want to do it you've, all the time you've convinced me i need to i need to do at least one pure rules match Anyway, we are talking to Josh Woods on AEW Unrestricted. Coming up, we'll talk a little bit about his initial ROH run and much, much more. And we're back. It's Aubrey and Alex with our very special guest here on Unrestricted, Josh Woods. Josh, by the way, do you still have the goods? Are they somewhere? (laughs) They never left. Like, who are you talking to? What? Yeah. You're Josh the Goods Woods. Now you're a technical a beast. Well, yeah, I think once I kind of transitioned more from like being with when I was in ROH with Silas, and we were kind of uh, I don't know if you guys ever saw any of our stuff. I'll, 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 mm-hmm. I'll try and get a couple of our skits, or whatever. But we definitely had a lighter feel to us. And once you know, uh, we started to kind of have our program where we split, and um, I went more into the pure rules. I kind of shifted like my character a little bit to a little more serious, more aggression. And um, I think Caprice Coleman coined that. He like, called me a technical beast once. And I was like, <laughs> well, okay. Mm. You know, so. <laughs> Taking that. <laughs> I mean, if you're going you're gonna to say it, I'll, I'll believe it. So, yes, yeah, so I, I, I really liked it. And I just kind of picked up and, and ran with it. Like in the pure division, I think I'm pretty much bigger than everyone else. Like cl- classically, like who wrestles pure rules. So, so I'm definitely just like launching people, but hey, I'll break your arm in half too. You know? <laughs> yeah, there's balance. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. love it. The love and it, yang. love it. Right? You have to be both a nice guy and be able to break people's arms. Like that's mm-hmm. that's that's life. that's the balance. That's the balance <laughs> we need in the universe. <laughs> important, I think. So you originally signed with Ring of Honor in 2017, and at the time you said Ring of Honor changed your life. Uh, can you talk about why that was such a pivotal moment and why it was so important to you? Uh, well, let's see. Whoa, man, that's a long time ago. Uh, so I got released from NXT in 2016. I, I like, I was very new to wrestling. I was barely even in two years, and and um anyone who has been in that program or that system, like you get a really advanced, like crash course in wrestling. So, you know, you hear a lot of people say, Oh, I've been wrestling for 10 years. And all right, well, you re- practice what once a week or you wrestle like once a month. Like how, how do you really gauge like what, whose time is, is, is more like who's really put in more time. And when you're there, at least when I was there at that time, I know it's a very different schedule now, but when I was there, we were, I think I was in the ring almost five days a week, sometimes six. And like, that's pretty unheard of on, on the independent scene from, from my experience hearing other people and plus, you know, three shows every, every weekend. So I think I just, just I did so much of it. I was like, well, I don't want to leave. Like, I don't want to be done at wrestling because I could have gone back to fighting or, or just, you know, done something else. But I think I had just invested so much time and just so much part of myself. I was like, man, I just can't be done. And I didn't, I'd never done the Indies prior to NXT. So I had like no idea what that was even. So I'm like, wait, what? You can do other stuff? Like, oh, I just insane. <laughs> and yeah. So, and then like, I did like, I think like a couple and then I had the ROH tryout and then I signed with them. And like, I, I was kind of at a low point when I got released. Cause like, I'd never really been like bad at anything. So like, they don't really tell you why you just kind of like, Oh man, what did I do wrong? You know, it's like a breakup. Like, Oh, you're dumped. It's like, oh, okay. Let's, <laughs> what did I do? Like, got, got a lot of self doubt and confidence issues. And, and, and it, yeah, like I think a lot of people like romanticize like what we do, but they really don't understand like the kind of like mental toll it takes. And, and like, that's like a whole other issue as I'm sure you guys know as well. But yeah, so like kind of being a Ring of Honor like really like 
really brought back like the love of wrestling for me and kind of like did change my life because I was able to, you know, live, I don't know, do what I love because I, I fell in love with wrestling. So it's like so corny, but I don't care. Well, you, you rebounded quite nicely because you defeated Gresham for the pure title back at death before dishonor. Can you tell us about that moment and kind of what it meant to you? Oh, oh okay. That was, oh, oh yeah. We're getting so, a little deep now. Yeah. Um, this is a hard one for me. So prior to that, which was in September, um, my father had never seen me wrestle before. Uh, he saw me in college and, and MMA stuff and, and, you know, he was there and I won nationals and all that, all that good stuff. But, uh, so prior to that, we were going to wrestle in Lakeland and that's maybe two, three hours from my dad. And, uh, he had passed, uh, I don't know, maybe a month before that show. Damn. Yeah, and he was going to be there. And, uh, yeah, so, <laughs> uh, so he had obviously, you know, we talk about wrestling. So any trip I had, whether it was an independent show or for Ring of Honor, I would call my dad after and we would talk about it. So that was kind of like my, my, uh, my travel ritual. And that would, whew, that would have been the, the first show I had since that happened. And uh, he was going to be there. And I wasn't going to tell him what was going to happen just because yeah, it would have been more fun if, if he just yeah. saw it. So that, we had the match and, you know, I was, so I was, I was, yeah, I was jazzed to have him there. And, and, you know, when he passed, it was just like, it was, yeah, it was, a, oh man, it was a rough moment for me. Uh, me and my dad were really close. And uh, so I do my entrance and, you know, uh, John does his and I get out of the ring. And there's this guy, he looks just like my dad. I mean, like, I, I, I was like, oh, shit. And I just start crying. Like, I just start oh crying. Wow. And I'm like, oh, my God. Like, I literally just start crying, like, in John's entrance. So I'm just like, I'm like, oh, my God. Like, what is going on with me right now? And then I'm like, well, I'm about to wrestle. Good thing I don't remember any of that. So, uh, <laughs> oh, so, so uh, yeah, and winning it, uh, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard to, I mean, yeah, it was it was like probably one of my biggest like, accomplishments in pro wrestling for sure. Uh, not just because like oh you win a belt or a title, it's just it's just what it means to do something like that you know, that you've hit X amount of credit or of, of you're good at whatever you do, or it's just, it's, it's more than just winning something. It's just like the company trusts you. And that's insane that this company trusts you to be the face of this division or to lead it. And like, that's, that's awesome for me. And so like, I know my dad would have been really proud of that. And, uh, so after I won, I like they're trying to interview me. And I'm like crying. And I'm like, oh, can you guys stop? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that, I mean, it, I think it meant more to me in the fact that like, yo, know, my dad would have been really proud. And um, yeah, so it was, it was more so for that than like the accomplishment of doing it. And you know, regardless of John standing with this company, he's probably one of the best wrestlers in the world. And just to have another match with him we've had eight or nine it's just constantly all, always good from top to bottom that's that's an awesome story sorry for your loss yeah. man that's mm -hmm. it's Shame. it's always unfortunate because like there's never a good time for that kind of stuff but especially when you have this like really important moment in your life and you're oh man i'm so sorry but thank that's you for fun. sharing with us i really appreciate yeah that. yeah and like it sucks it was so sudden it wasn't like oh you know, there's a timeline of things. It was like gone. And just yep. like, yeah. And yeah, it's still, it's still, yeah, it gets me. It gets me a lot sometimes. And, but, you know, right foot, left foot, you know? Yeah. Just keep, you just keep going forward. Keep going forward. Okay. Now, so now I call anybody after my wrestling show that just sit in silence and uh, you got to call Jay Lethal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we'll we'll take your call. Yeah. We travel together. Yeah. So true. we're always on the same flights. Oh, nice. I always like when uh when you end up on a flight and there's always the same people. It's like, oh, yeah, you connect through here because you're a Delta mm -hmm. person. Oh, you connect through here because you're a United person. Yeah. Well, I pick up Jay or, family. Or, or I go to his house and we just drive to the airport together. So we're Oh, awesome. So like the yeah, entire I, way. 
yeah, like we're there, like forever. Cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's why he's calling. He needs a lift. Yeah. Uh, he lives closer to the airport than me. <laughs> 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 He's oh fun. man oh man all right so so left foot right foot one step forward let's keep talking about ring of honor a little bit uh so final battle uh december of that year defended the pure championship against brian johnson but i think around that time they'd announced that ring of honor was sort of kind of going by the wayside so what did that mean to you like not knowing sort of what the future of ring of honor is but still being a champion and representing the company uh man it was it's like a bittersweet moment, right? Because this is a company I, I was there for four years and, and you build like relationships like really fast. Cause, I mean, you guys know, man, you're around these people all the time and, and it's like the uncertainty of not knowing what's happening or, or where people are going to end up and, and just being able to, to just be under that banner like one more time officially was, uh, uh, pr- being proud is like a, a very cliche word but like it's a very appropriate word. Uh, it was definitely bittersweet and it was sad for a lot of people. And like the morale backstage was like kind of, you know, because we're all not sure what's going on. And, you know, people have no clue what they're going to do. And it was like sad, but awesome to be with everybody one more time. And, and for me, I just, I, don't know, I just love it. Like I, I just in the moment, I loved it. And, and, you know, despite what people know about Brian or, or whatnot, uh, Brian is incredible. And we kind of came in around the same time and had different, you know, paths, but we were always together. And I learned a lot from Brian just as a person and, and wrestler and friend. So just being able to like share, like, I think that was his first pay-per-view wow. uh, for us. Hmm. So like being able to do that, like with a, with a friend or, or whatever was, was really, it was really cool for both of us. So he hit me really hard in the face. <laughs> 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 it hit me so hard in the face and like my eye like like was like swollen and like pop my blood dust like are you mad at me like oh, what a know. jerk yeah what an asshole. <laughs> but it was so excited though like it was a, it was a total like misstep but it was so I was like why do you why are you so mad like i love you like he's like well, <laughs> okay all right no brian's incredible no I was just kidding just kidding so yeah. speaking of ring of, ring of honor when did you find out when was the exact moment you found out that TK purchased Ring of Honor, and what were the thoughts going through your head when that happened? We were at dark. I think I think we were at dark, or, or... there was Where a dynamite. We... He announced it on dynamite. Yeah. So I guess you were you were a part of that dark. Was I there? Was that in Orlando? I think no. He announced it on dynamite. I think in Jacksonville. It was. Yeah, it was Jacksonville. Oh, no, I'm thinking about a different thing that got announced. Okay, totally different. Uh, <laughs> There's so much stuff that happens. We can't keep track. Yeah, yeah it's, it's, it's tough. It all, it all blends together. I mean, I mean, so when I when I heard about it, like, of course, like, you're getting a lot of messages from, like, the ROH boys, like, oh, did you hear? What about this? And we're like, and, like, I, at this point, I think had already been doing, like, a lot of a lot of darts, or I might have traveled maybe mm-hmm. a couple times, and people are like, oh, what does this mean? Can you find out? I'm like, oh, what do I know? Like, I don't know <laughs> anything. Like, <laughs> So like I I mean it was it's obviously being you know had being there a little bit before that had happened and then uh you know experience I was like it was pretty sweet because you know everyone kind of knows how much Tony loves this business and how much he loves mm-hmm. wrestling so oh yeah kind of definitely gave me that like little spark of joy like oh man like ROH could be back and and like it could definitely help a lot of people and it could just kind of not revive wrestling. I hate people say that, but <laughs> it could definitely, could definitely, like, definitely add uh, another option or whatever you want to call it. But it definitely like is exciting. It's great. It's phenomenal. And I was like, man, I hope I'm a part of that because you know I, I love ROH and I love what it did for me and, and the brand. Like I love AW as well. Don't I'm not, don't spit my words, people. Okay, like I love that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Keeps so, don't twist it. <laughs> yeah, 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 chill out. All right, I'll find. <laughs> Uh, you know so i thought it was awesome that like that, that that could possibly come back and now that is like sort of back or whatever but yeah i thought that was like an incredible an incredible announcement to say the least at the very least it's definitely cool because i mean like you being a part of ring of honor you know how much history there is with ring of honor in wrestling so sort of like the idea of knowing that that history is going to be protected and 
uh, promoted and continually just referenced and stuff. Like as someone who is in wrestling, even though I never got to work for Ring of Honor, I'm like, this is this is really cool. We're uh, yeah. we're talking to Josh Woods here on AEW Unrestricted. We got a little bit more to talk about with his background in wrestling, actual wrestling, uh, not this spandex men rolling around on TV stuff, but Man, wrestling at college. <laughs> It's kind of the same thing, but yeah, you know, it's, whatever. It's, it's almost the same. <laughs> almost the same thing, but we're going to talk about it and then answer some fan questions coming up. This is AEW Unrestricted. Alex and Aubrey talking to Josh Woods, who is so popular. So that popular. in between all of these segments, he's just gotten calls from Jay Lethal, mm-hmm. Citibank, whoever yep. the hell just needs to get a hold of him. But what do yeah. you want? I don't know. I don't know, man. They they just they just want want your vibes, man. Just positive want, vibes, bringing it they around. They want the goods. They want my they want, goodies. They want the goods. <laughs> they want the goods. That is absolutely what it is. All right. You you mentioned a little bit about your wrestling background, wrestling in college, sweaty dudes. Uh, what's the biggest challenge going from amateur wrestling to professional wrestling? Cool. Oh, there's so many. Oh, wow. uh, like learning the moves is probably by far the easiest because like anyone who's been like an amateur wrestler and I, I really hate that term by the way the amateur wrestling but it's another conversation to have <sighs> but uh <laughs> learn, <laughs> learn, <laughs> like learning is so easy because we were basically just like throwing so much technique and that was by far the easiest part and i think like the hardest the hardest thing is to take out the realism like the the I don't mean like uh, what we're doing, but like being having that real wrestling mindset, which people are like, oh, you can't say that. I'll say whatever I want. Mm. Uh, like it's your you podcast. Gotta, yeah, you gotta kind of stop thinking that way, and it's it's sometimes it's harder than others because you know, like if you come from an athletic background before you get into wrestling, you have like a very competitive mindset, and that's not my fault. That's just how I've been an athlete my whole life, almost since '99. Like it's a long time. And to kind of turn that off, but I think to like take my mind out of that, like, and separate pro wrestling from amateur, and then also like character stuff is so hard because you're not like having fun when you're wrestling in college. <laughs> like, yeah, you're miserable. Like, you're cutting weight. Like, you're hungry. You're, like, <laughs> oh, Trash like, bags. Yeah, you're just like, oh, God, is it done? Like, there's no, there's no happiness. <laughs> there's not a thing. You're not like working the. Uh, okay, I did that once. Okay, I'm getting trouble. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, you're not, like, trying to find, you know, it's just you're very focused. And I think, like, sometimes I would get very, like, tunnel vision on, on like, a match or, or, or spots or something and, like, forget the in-between. And, like, that's when the really hardest part for me was the in-between things and, and the more entertainment side of it. Um, personality, I think I, I kind of have a decent one. So, like, that stuff's not hard. It's just, like, it's fine. Fine. Yeah, it's you know, okay. above, <laughs> above average, but not great. Uh, <laughs> a know, solid so. six and a half. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. <laughs> like, Ooh. <laughs> Stop it, dude. Stop. <laughs> but so, <laughs> so, yeah, so that was like probably the hardest thing for me. And uh, I still kind of have some issues with it, but uh, I mean, I've, you know, no one's perfect. It's, it's true. Well, I, uh, your uh, cool points with me elevated extremely when Aubrey tweeted out that you have a love of acai bowls. So we need to talk about this, my friend, because this is the real deal. I am excited to hear about your love for acai bowls because I recently have fallen in love with acai bowls. So let's discuss. Welcome, dude. How good are they? They're they're ridiculous. Do you like smoothies? Do you like cereal? Would you like both? (laughs) Right. Like, it's so good. And like, it. And it's definitely like more like, like dense, is dense the right word? Yes. It's, it's not as yeah. fluid as smoothies. Cause like, yeah, if you take a smoothie and put it in a bowl, it's like, oh, dude, like it feels wrong. But like, man, I say, you, like, man, you can put so much stuff in like whole fruits and, and, and peanut butter and honey and like coconut. It's just so good. Granola. Oh, I want one right now. Oh, man. But they're so good. What's your favorite? Them. What What do you mean? What's my favorite? Like, well, like, what are your favorite toppings? Do you have, like, cycle? a go-to? What's your perfect? Uh, yeah. Oh, well, there's not a place by me. It's, like, whenever I find one, I can hopefully get one. I don't have, like, a consistent place where I go in and they go, oh, hey, you're getting the number seven? And I'm like, yeah, you, you know what? Uh, man, I, I'm a big fan of peanut butter, uh, honey, mm. strawberry, granola, banana. I can, oh, I, the I, best. Can, I can take the coconut on there, but it doesn't make or break it for me. If it's on there, I'll eat it. 
but I'm not like a, a big throw some coconut on there kind of guy. But uh, yeah, so I think those are like my basic uh, flavors. So I do that. There was a place in Orlando that you told me about that I went Purple to, which Ocean. was probably, yeah, 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 Purple Ocean, which was like the best acai bowl I've ever had. So good. So like when we're when we're there for dark uh, later on this month, like you and I are going to have to go. Like, yeah, oh, yeah. I'm in too. Count me in, please. Yes. yes. Love it. I know they have a truck, so maybe we can find where the Ooh. truck is at. I think Waterford's Dude. a little far from Universal, but yeah. worth, worth, worth it. it. Worth it. I've been uh, door dashing a lot when we're on the road and there's a lot dash. of cool places mm-hmm. oh door- yeah oh that's yeah. great dude. i found that's- one in indianapolis it was phenomenal really, really? yep oh and yeah you did, and you withheld from us wow <laughs> well i didn't know this <laughs> is new know. information now we're acai ball brothers this is great hmm. you've changed <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> i want the world oh. to know <laughs> we've uh we've become friends and enemies in the course of this podcast mm-hmm. this is pretty yeah. great <laughs> just just oh my god roller coaster an emotional roller coaster uh, an emotional roller coaster for sure oh man uh i want to know before we get into fan questions i want to know what are your goals in aew and roh uh for the next year or so maybe not even the next year like maybe just the next in general <laughs> Man, that's, I'm sure you'll get the cliche answer, but I want to be champion. I want to be a book, book. Well, that would be great, <laughs> right? Like who, doesn't that? like, who doesn't want to to be on top? Uh, I think some people do, some people don't. I don't mind it. I would like to be champion at some point of something. Uh, I think right now, just in the next, let's we'll call it a year, uh, I, man, I really just want to put on great matches and entertain. Like, I love it. I love doing it. Like I, I just I love being able to do what I love, and and uh, I think if we can just figure out a way to just do more, like you know, because we have a lot of people. But I just I just want to wrestle, man. I gotta love it. I'm, like we our roster is so talented, and and like you, you can't name who you want to wrestle and not pretty much hit everyone. So mm. like, it's not really someone I don't want to wrestle. There's obviously people I really want to wrestle. I think maybe if I could get some of those opportunities, I think that would be enough for me. Because you know, once you do one, you keep doing them, and you're like, yeah, so good. So I think that safe answer. Safe answer. Let's just wrestle. I just want to just wrestle. So speaking of wrestlers, you had mentioned that uh, Jake Hager would make a great addition to the varsity athletes. Is it because you like the hat? Would you wear the hat? I, I would wear the hat. I'm a big hat it's guy. It's a good hat. Yeah. It's a good yeah. hat. It's You'd nice. look good in the hat. I would. Oh, stop it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I think, I mean, Jake is like an incredible athlete. And we, we were training for like a couple months leading up to a fight he was going to have. And that got changed and moved around and stuff. So I got to get close with Jake just doing that, like, you know, grappling and working on wrestling and stuff in preparation for that fight. So, like, yeah, like that would be awesome to have him with us or us with him or however that would be or not at all or just a one-time thing but yeah i think jake's incredible so any sort of combo of that would be really cool jake's an absolutely incredible athlete and yeah you, mm-hmm. two, would, you two would tear it up like uh, yeah, I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna call that one right now like if you guys ever wrestle like i'm, I'm gonna ref that please and thank you hashtag uh, dibs yeah dibs. would it be pure like, rules Oh, ooh. Mm. I, we, if we do like a series, maybe like a uh, oh. something like amateur, which people may hate that, but I don't care. Uh, and then normal and then pure or something, you know, something, something, something. Have you ooh. ever heard of chess boxing? Who? <laughs> chess, uh, chess boxing. So like you play a game of chess and you have like a limited amount of time. And then once that period of time is done, then you have like a short round of a boxing fight. What? And, yeah. What? Yeah. No, this is great. Look it up on YouTube. I swear. Oh my god. But it, Where is this? It, it's. I. I don't. I haven't seen one live, but I've watched a couple of videos. But it's like you have someone who's like super, like, like really good at chess, and they're trying to like win the game before they hit like their two minute or whatever time it is, because once they get to the boxing round, they're getting their ass kicked. So it's oh, kind of one of those like you get to use both your mind and your body <laughs> to try and win this contest, and you're just jumping from like one to the next. 
man, if I'm really good at boxing and I suck at chess, well, I'm not going to move the whole time. I'm going to go, all right, we're waiting. <laughs> three minutes. We're waiting. That's, well, that's what we're doing. Oh, it's a man. game of strategy. That's smart. There you go. That's so- <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah, it's great. Oh, no. It's great. Uh, all right. So you, you had said something on Twitter, and I need to ask about this. Uh, you had said, uh, hers sour cream and onion is the best brand and flavor of potato chips. Ooh. Uh, what kind of research went into this and how, like, how, how did you develop this opinion? Okay. So like, I'm a big food person, right? Like you couldn't tell, but I am. Uh, <laughs> Cause I we've already talk. talked about acai bowls extensively yeah. on this podcast. Like, I, I, like one of my, 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 uh, you can call it a hidden talent or a passion or a secret talent, whatever. Like I'm really good at cooking. Like I'm mm. pretty much Gordon Ramsay. So like, uh, oh. Hey dad, wow. you're out there. You know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh man, Gordon Ramsay is like the best. Uh, yeah. So like, I just, I, I love chips and I love, I love all food, but like, like I like the snack on chips and this has been like a long, a long debate for me. Cause like when we're on the road, like when I was on ROH, like, a bunch of us just get snacks and we're like comparing things and like hers they do their chips just taste so good like they're rigid and they're, and they're full flavored and and they're oh man oh, they're so good i just found yeah, that they had their a, sour cream and onion it's next level for sure i know and they have a pizza one that i just discovered you know pizza what? what i know but you can't get it in a normal bag you gotta get a big one and let me tell you that didn't last very long in my house okay it's gone i got it three days ago and we were gone, and that just means I ate it yesterday. Okay, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> <laughs> well, wait until we go back to Kansas City. There's a, a company called Guys, and their potato chips are insane. You're going to love it. Yeah, it's out of this world good. So Thanks. we'll put that on the list. Acai bowls, potato chips. We're making the whole uh, foodie list across the country. We're going to make a group text that's just like, hey, let's just try food. It, we're just, we're just <laughs> food porning it up. Like, hey. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm, I like yeah. it. I like I love, it. Love that. So let's uh, let's continue on. Actually, should we jump into uh, maybe some fan questions? Yeah, we got a we got Aubrey? we got a couple here. Yes, yes, yes. You, yeah, Alex. What do we got? Okay, so uh, the Karina Crow, not to be confused with Karina Crow, the Karina Crow, wants Karina to know Crow. what was your favorite part about working for ROH. Uh, uh, eat the whole. <laughs> The easiest and obvious answer is working with Silas. Oh my God. I, we, the the kind of like backstage shenanigans we did were just, I had so much fun because people like would watch them and be like, Josh is an idiot. I'm like, no, I'm, that's just my, like, that's just, <laughs> there's no, like I had so much fun with Silas and like I legit the, 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 the relationship we had on screen is almost identical in real life. Like I would text I him. All, it's like, for me, blue, 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 white, blue, 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 blue. And he's like, can you stop? Like, <laughs> me alone? like no, dude, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> like, never. Yeah. So now Mark and Tony are getting that. Like, our group text is just a lot of me and like them, one, one or two wording a sentence. I'm like, all right, that's what are you doing? You know, like, yeah, I'm like that. I'm like an annoying girlfriend. That's <laughs> <laughs> just, that's, that's what up. you get in tag team partners is Josh Woods, the annoying girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Like, Saz has had to like abuse me, like grab me by the arm. Hey, can you stop? Like, we're in front of our friends. Like, <laughs> 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 yeah, and then I have to like pull him to the side, and I go, you know, like I could hold you down and tickle you in front of everybody, and no one could stop me <laughs> <you> at all. <laughs> He's like, and you're right, dude. <laughs> that's an actual threat. Like, no, yeah, that's legit. I've, I've said that to him a few times. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, I love it. All right, another question on Twitter. National Scissoring Day says, uh, "What was the match that you had that where you had the most fun?" Oh, fun! What? There are a lot of layers to what fun is. I know. Mm. Uh, Man, uh, I think like the the last pure match I had with Jay was really fun. Just just being in there with him and and like knowing that we have like a good friendship and, and so, like just just everything about that was was great. I don't want to like you know break his name too much, but like when <laughs> when, you're, when you're in the ring with someone you're like cool with and like you have a really good relationship with, it just makes everything just so much better. And oh, like, yeah. you kind of. Talk kind of talk a little bit like, in the fashion yeah so i think 
that's probably one of the most fun matches I've had. And obviously, I had a lot of fun with Silas doing stuff. I think I spanked Jay Briscoe once in the butt. And like, that was fun for me. <laughs> it's like, you know, Jay Briscoe, like, you're like, yeah, no one does that to Jay. And I'm like, well, no. I <laughs> <laughs> yeah, naughty. I'm a naughty boy. And I'm you lived to tell naughty. about it. I did. I got hit pretty hard after that, but it was worth it to me. It was worth it. <laughs> got to smack a butt and then get punched in the face. The yeah. Story I mean, of wrestling. <laughs> it's hand in hand, you know, really. Really is. It really is. Well, thank you, Josh. I really appreciate you joining us today. I appreciate you sharing with us. And uh, I, I appreciate laughing as much as I did on this podcast. Mm. Like, you're a real me funny too. guy. And I'm glad that uh, our fans now know that. So this is awesome. Thank yeah, you so much yeah, for joining us today. Uh, thanks for having me. It's been it's been awesome. I'm sorry my dog didn't want to come in here. She's like, she checked everything out in the beginning. She's like, all right, later, dude. That's we're gonna have I'm to gonna, we're gonna have to have an episode with your dog in the future. Mm-hmm, I'm gonna for sure. Guys, I'm gonna leave you guys with this note because I'm a big sock person. Okay, I have a lot. All right, I'm a Whoa. big sock guy. I socks. know. My favorite thing to collect is fun socks, and my favorite mm. animal is a red panda. So uh, I'm just gonna let you guys look at these real quick. Oh my god! Look at that. Whoa. We're not, we're like best friends now. You don't understand. Like I'm a huge sock person. <laughs> yeah, like, I love them. Like mine, I, I don't have mine right now, but the ones I had yesterday had like adorable little hedgehogs on them. <laughs> socks are fun. Socks yeah, are very fun. Socks very are great. fun. You, you could have a shitty day, but at least your socks were good. So that's yeah. true. <laughs> and we found out today how much fun Josh Woods is. My goodness, we did. We did. It was wonderful. Thank you, Josh, for being here. You can follow Josh on Instagram and Twitter. Woods is the goods. You can listen to this podcast, new episodes every Thursday on all of your favorite podcast platforms and video episodes on YouTube on Mondays. Just search AEW and Restricted. Elevation on Monday, Dark on Tuesday, Dynamite on Wednesday, and Rampage on Friday. You can watch us all everywhere. I'm Aubrey Edwards here with Alex Abrahentes. Thank you so much for listening to AEW Unrestricted.